Have you ever struggled with a problem only to see the solution and think, gee, that was much easier than I thought? Flight data monitoring, or FOCWA, can be a lot like that. If you've been holding back from setting up a flight data monitoring program because you think that it's too complicated, then hopefully I can put you at ease. I'm Dion Bozak from Scaled Analytics, and we hear this concern quite often from operators that understand the benefits of flight data monitoring, but don't know where to start when it comes to running a program. We try to get them to start off simple and not make things too complicated too soon. Data analysis, whether it's flight data, financial data, climate data, or any other type of data, can have a reputation for being complicated and difficult to understand. And there's no doubt that there is complicated analysis that can be done. But you don't need to do complex analysis to benefit from a flight data monitoring program. Many operators have come to us that have flight data monitoring programs with other vendors, and those vendors provided them with very detailed reports. But the problem is that these reports are so detailed that the operator has no idea what to do with them. And sometimes the vendors don't seem to be able to help. It sometimes makes me wonder if the person that produced the reports really understands them. Now, I don't doubt that the data in these reports is accurate, but if the operator doesn't understand what they're saying, it's impossible to act on the information they present. An old mentor of mine used to joke about surveys having a 90% confidence level 19 times out of 20. He and I had somewhat different views on the importance of statistics and flight data, but the point he was trying to make was valid. If no one understands or trusts the information you're presenting, then it's of no use. And I agree. My advice is not to worry about doing analysis that requires an advanced degree in statistics, at least not until you've dealt with a low-hanging fruit. What I mean by that is that if you've just started your FDM program, start by looking at your high-risk events. These would be the events that really tie into your SMS program. If left alone, they could lead to something very serious like an incident or worse. Now, for fairly obvious reasons, these are going to be the events that occur near the ground, your departure and arrival events. Examples would include excessive bank angles on approach, low speeds on arrival and departure, uh, late configuration changes, or any of the items we typically associate with unstable approaches. Start by looking at these events to see if the severities and frequencies are acceptable or if changes need to be made to get them under control. No PhD is required for this one. Now with that under control, I'd then suggest looking at those events that are occurring quite frequently but may not pose an immediate threat. This would include events such as high rates of descent on initial descent, high taxi speeds, and excessive bank angles at altitude. Try to identify why those are occurring frequently and see what measures can be taken to reduce the frequency of them occurring. Now, if they are occurring frequently and you're not doing anything about it, you may need to ask yourself why you're monitoring them in the first place. Maybe it's time to remove them from your program. If you've been running your FDM program and collecting data for some time now, hopefully you've already taken care of that low-hanging fruit that I just mentioned. But by now, you should also have enough data to look at some trends. This can be very helpful. Once again, Take a look at those events that could cause a serious incident or worse, and see how they're trending over time, such as month to month. Hopefully, you'll see that your earlier efforts are paying off and your event rates are trending downward. But if they're not, try to determine why not. Is it a training issue? Is it seasonal variations? Or perhaps a problem with the particular airports or even ATC? Again, this does not have to turn into a big science project. Keep things simple, identify problems that you can solve, and work on solving them. If you can take care of these relatively straightforward issues in your first 12 to 24 months of running your FDM program, you'll be well on your way to making significant safety improvements. Within that time, you'll likely also see your flight data can be used to help improve operational efficiency and maintenance. Once you've taken care of the basics and gained more experience in flight data monitoring, then you can move on to the more complicated analysis. And hopefully, by the time you've reached that point, you'll have made some significant improvements and the focus of your program will turn from just improving safety 
to maintaining that new, higher standard of safety you've achieved through the help of your flight data monitoring program. So don't feel intimidated if you're tasked with starting a flight data monitoring program in your organization. There is a lot to learn and do, but it doesn't have to be complicated, especially if you're just starting out. If you do need help though, the team at Scale Analytics has many years of experience working with flight data and flight data monitoring programs, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Whether you're working with Scaled Analytics or another software or service provider, congratulations on taking the first step getting started with flight data monitoring.